Hi, I'm Sam Slater from Fun Calibre and today I'm joined by Jeremy Gleeson, manager of Elite Rated AXA Framlington Global Technology Fund. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome, thank you. It's been 20 years now since the technology bubble burst. Mm -hmm. What's your abiding memory of that time? Well, yeah, it was kind of a crazy time mm. because um, the one thing I really remember was the amount of new issu issuance of stock that was coming out at mm -hmm. the time. So there was, you know, it felt like dozens of IPOs every week and secondary deals. The companies were just issuing more and more paper. And it was a really difficult time to then do any sort of proper fundamental analysis on all these various companies that were trying to come public and discern which ones could truly be great companies and which ones were just mm. noise. Um, you just weren't being given the time in the market to be able to discern between average companies and good quality companies. So it really turned that period of the market into a period where it was very hard to add any good quality value mm. as being an active fund manager. And three of the stocks that you hold today were around at the time, mm -hmm. and they fell by extraordinary amounts, I think. Cisco was down 86%, Qualcomm the same, Apple mm -hmm. was down about 75%. How did they survive and how have they evolved? So th those three companies were kind of in different places um, back then. Mm -hmm. um, Apple had probably only just about launched the I iPod. That's right. Um, and they were coming back from what was or had been a near-death experience. Steve Jobs had returned to the company mm -hmm. and was trying to you know, really sort of be creative and innovative, innovative with, with new product designs. Um, you remember those, we had those colourful iMacs, for example. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yes, th their share price fell a lot during that sort of dot-com bubble bursting period, but actually just a few years after that, the signs of success with the iPod had started to build. And then subsequently, a few years after that, in 2007, was when they launched the first iPhone. Mm -hmm. And kind of, you could argue that the, you know, the rest is history now in terms of where Apple is today. Um, Cisco, back in 2000, I think the world believed that this was the company that was going to you know, just benefit solely because of the huge growth of the internet mm -hmm. and the huge demand that would be there for them and their networking equipment. Um, in reality, what happened was that along with the likes of Hewlett Packard and Dell and Sun Micro Computers, mm. um, a lot of capacity had been built out during the dot-com bubble period, which subsequently had to be consumed mm. and digested. And Cisco suffered from that. So they saw sort of muted sales growth for many years after that. But now, actually, we added Cisco into the portfolio just four years ago, oh, okay. um, having not held it for some time. We felt it was a cheap company, that they'd actually delivered on a significant turnaround, and they'd actually changed the business quite significantly as well. They'd always focus on being a systems company, not hardware. And so whereas many of those other hardware companies I mentioned had become commodity, Cisco have maintained very strong gross margins, very strong operating margins, and as a result have remained very profitable and are still a very good company today, hence why it was attracted to us four years ago when we felt that it was just too cheap a stock to ignore. Qualcomm, um, who provide chips that go into mobile phones, mm -hmm. have benefited hugely from the adoption of smartphones. And we've held that in the portfolio for the 12 years that I've been running the okay. Axa Global Technology Fund. Um, it's not been the, the, the best returner over that period of time. Some people would argue that it's been somewhat disappointing mm. from a technology perspective, but it's returned on average over those 12 years around about 4 or 5% per annum, which for me, having a few stocks like that in the portfolio, which are a lot more sort of steady as they go, yeah. is actually quite nice. And Qualcomm's certainly done you know, very well, having once again fallen a long way in the early part of the 2000s. And over the past three years, technology stocks have really led the way for global markets. I think Microsoft has doubled in value. Apple in the last three years mm -hmm. has tripled in value. Both are trillion dollar companies now. Does that mean you think we're in another technology bubble? No, I don't think we're in, a, in another technology bubble. Um, I think the technology sector as a whole um, took quite a beating in the financial crisis period. Mm. Um, a lot of the issues that the broader equity market was suffering from were not attributes um, that the technology sector were, was, was suffering from in terms of being highly indebted companies um, or poor cash return companies. But people had long memories 
and they remembered what had happened in 2000. Mm -hmm. And when we went into the financial crisis in 2007, 2008, the technology sector was one of the first to be sold off very aggressively. So the returns that these companies have been providing over the last few years has to some extent been them recovering from a sell-off that actually they really shouldn't have been participating in okay. as much. Um, but saying that, within technology, because there's always so many exciting things going on, I can almost certainly always find you a bubble going on somewhere in the sector. Sometimes it might just be an individual stock, mm -hmm. sometimes it might be a, a certain sector within the technology sector, but by no means are we in sort of a, a sector-wide bubble in the same way that we had in 2000. The one underlying thing that I think is really supportive for these stocks is actually the valuations. Whilst the share prices have risen a lot, the valuations are still very attractive given the, the growth that they're delivering and given how they're valued relative to the market in general. And you mentioned there's lots of exciting things going on in technology. Um, we've got cyber insurance, which is a new thing. We've got artificial intelligence, the internet of things. What's the most exciting area for you? They're all really exciting areas. It's really hard to sort of pick one individual area. Um, I think one of the things that was really exciting is how these new innovations are really dovetailing one another. Okay. So the ones that you mentioned, Internet of Things, is providing the ability to collect data and information from a whole variety of endpoints that once upon a time just wasn't feasible. No. Um, you know, eventually we'll be able to increasingly make decisions based on that information using artificial intelligence to make autonomous decisions for mm -hmm. us, to make us all more efficient, whether we're at work or at home. And then obviously with all this data washing around, you need more cyber security to protect us um, from all the potential bad outcomes that could take place out there. But if you want me to highlight sort of one individual innovation, which I think is really exciting, it's probably around digital payments. Okay. And I do think that um, the really exciting thing about digital payments and the shift away from cash and check, you know, mm -hmm. believe it or not, they, mm -hmm. there are parts of the world that still use checks quite significantly, is the fact that people will increasingly become or be comfortable with a cashless society. Um, and one big driver for that, which isn't going away anytime soon, is demographics. Mm. So definitely the younger generation, the millennials, as yeah. they commonly refer to, um, are very comfortable about not carrying any cash with them mm. and paying on card or pay paying using their mobile phone when they need to make any sort of transaction. And I think that is a transition which is still relatively in its infancy mm -hmm. and will have many, many years to run. So there we invest in companies like Visa and PayPal, who mm. are both beneficiaries of that trend. That's really interesting. Thank you very much. I'm Sam Slater, and if you'd like to find out more about AXA Framlington Global Technology Fund, please go to funcalibur.com.